All right, today's the day. Finally getting this video together. I'm rocking a RAV4 2020 XLE hybrid. Generally, I have little to no vibrations up front when accelerating. I used to around 17 to 20 miles per hour, but that was old tires. I have new tires now and the vibrations have seemed to have gone away. So um, that's awesome. But yeah, let's get into it. Uh, go through some install processes and some modifications needed. Okay, so the instructions say to remove the, the negative off the battery, so that's what I've done here. I have a hybrid, so my battery is in the rear. Okay, next step is removing the cotter pin, and then we'll remove this nut as well. So we're just gonna put this down and let it hang. Okay, remove the 14 millimeter bolts for the brake line here. Okay, so that comes out. Kind of pull this out. Let it kind of hang to the side. That kind of comes up and out. Cool. You just want to make sure it's off of that bracket there. And then coming around to the other side, you want to remove the line bracket from the strut. There you go. Okay, if we keep following that line, you'll see there's a, this is a wheel speed sensor, and that takes a 10 millimeter bolt. So, same line, so we're just gonna remove it from here now. Okay, I got this whole line tucked kind of out of the way to the left. This one's still kind of hanging here. Um, next is removing the uh, sway bar end link here. It takes a 17 millimeter, and you're just gonna unbolt that. Okay, slight delay. I had to replace my uh, my sway bar link. I stripped the threads on the top, so. Whoops. Um, but yeah, back to it. Uh, get this unbolted from here. Um, have that hang off to the side. Next is removing these Big old knuckle bolts, it's 22 millimeters. So we're gonna get that removed now. One thing I forgot to mention, um, as you get these bolts out, make sure you have some sort of apparatus to um, basically hold this whole assembly here um, up this way, right? So what I ended up doing was my CV actually popped out. Um, you see the, the, the crinkle and the boot. Um, that should still be fine, but it's a pain in the butt because that popped out this way, right? And then I couldn't get the knuckle to realign. So that took me about 30 minutes to, to wiggle. You can take the, the brake rotor here, wiggle it left and right until it kind of pops back in. Uh, it finally popped right back into place. So uh, yeah, take your time with it. Um, make sure you do this while you take the, uh, before you take the, um, these bolts out because you don't want this to pop out too far towards you, right? Because then the CV is going to pop out of place, potentially. Uh, it's more likely, so. Um, doesn't take much tension to hold this upright. Uh, I just have a little ratchet strap here. You can see it's not terribly tight, um, but it was just enough. I hooked it to the sway bar here um, just, to, just to keep it up while I got this in place. Okay, we have those two bolts removed as well. Just make sure you're supporting with a jack here. This should move pretty freely now. The one thing we don't want to do is this arm get too low because then our, our whole CV is going to pop out. So we don't want that to happen. Next is removing these three bolts here. They're all 14 millimeter. Okay, as you remove the last nut of these three, this is my last one. You're going to want to take your other hand and come down here and support this strut as it comes loose because you don't want it falling on your boots down there. Um, so yeah, hold this and support it while you're unbolting the top bolt. Okay, so that's what it should look like from the top. Got the strut assembly all removed. Okay, I have the strut spacer installed now using the old bolts, um, or nuts I should say, with flanges. Just hand tighten those. It says 30 foot-pounds. 
but I don't have anything that kind of fits in the space. So I just hand tighten all of them um, pretty good, pretty tight. So yeah, should be good to go. That's what it looks like. Okay, I got the struts, the spacer loosely installed. So we'll come back down here. You'll see that it's still pretty loose. Now we're just gonna line the knuckle back up to the strut with the use of a jack. All right, we got these torqued back to 110 foot-pounds. You'll start reinstalling the brake line, uh, the speed sensor back down there, that bolt, that clips back in, another bolt here, and then yeah, we're almost done. Sway bar link bracket, so this piece right here, um, that was installed with provided bolts and washers. Bracket goes there, kind of butts up against this and extends this up so it can still function properly. Last thing is installing this. Passed up through here. So now I need to just put the castle nut back on with the cotter pin. Okay, we have the shock unmounted, sitting there. Some of these bolts, I had to take off the, the toe arm here. Uh, it looks like this. So I had to go up under that and then unbolt two bolts just to be able to get to this bolt here. So that comes off and then these brackets and the instructions are next. It'll fit like that. Um, but what we need to do is modify it black yoda rav on instagram had this issue with let's see if i grab this kind of angle it the same so he was having issues with this bracket smacking that that toe arm right so what he did is he cut some more out so as everything gets compressed that that toe arm comes up and it wants to smack the bottom of this bracket, right? So to avoid that smacking or that thumping, which a couple of people have pointed out in reviews online, we just have to modify this a little bit more and just cut some out. And that's what he's done here in these photos. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have it marked. Um, basically I took the bolts uh, or the nut and placed it down here to see how far out it reaches. So. I marked off just enough to where it'll still bite, right? Cause I don't want to cut into here. Otherwise the nut head won't, won't bite and it could warp over time. Okay, brackets are modified. A little deeper angle on the cut. Should allow that toe arm to not hit. I'm gonna hit this up with some Rust-Oleum, Rust Reformer, just to protect it some. Okay, I have the trailing arm unbolted and removed. Took these 14 millimeter bolts out. Next, you're gonna take this horseshoe sort of bracket with lock washers and the flat washers, and then you'll bolt that in between the trailing arm and the unibody. The U-shape goes towards the front. The trailing arm here wants to kind of buckle that way. It might just be how I have everything jacked up at the moment. While I was trying to get these bolts in, it, it wanted to pull that way. So you kind of have to like pull this, get the bolts in at the same time, get them threaded um, a couple turns and then go to the other side and then yeah, start tightening down. Before I go any further on the rough country instructions, I'm replacing the control arms so I can get a better alignment when I go in. One, two bolts. So one's back there, and then one's right here. If it's on the knuckle, you'll have to support the control arm so it doesn't drop. I have the Godspeed adjustable uh, control arms here. I have it dialed in to the same settings as this. I'm not gonna really mess with it. I'm just gonna take it into the alignment shop and have them adjust the settings here. There's not really an indication as to which one's left and which one's right, but I think there is a left and a right. So this piece here, that, that needs to look like that, right? So I'm on the left side of the car. This top piece needs to angle up towards the top. And that's because when you put it in here, 
this lines up better with the knuckle. It also sticks out to the right this way. That bolt isn't welded on, it's centered for a reason. But yeah, we'll get this bolted back just like that. All right, she's loosely installed. This is actually easier going on than taking this off. Mostly because this swivels, right? And it's adjustable. So there's more play to get this around the knuckle. Did this side first, just to line it up to the knuckle. That's easier. And then once that, you get the bolt just pop through. Uh, pop the bolt through back up there. And then now we gotta torque it. So I looked up some torque specs. This is the rear control arm. So the knuckle side gets 75 foot-pounds, and then the frame side gets 66. So 75, and then 66 back there. Okay, next is removing this bracket. Don't pay attention to this line, that's for my airbags. I'm gonna remove this big old pin, and this big nut that's on it. I used a big wrench to get that loosened. And then that takes a 10 millimeter and then you'll unscrew that a little bit. And then you'll be left with this little nut that's on this side. Get that loosened and then this should fall right off. Save this nut. You're gonna wanna do both sides at the same time. So that bolt that you remove here with the nut, you're gonna do that to both sides. And then once both sides are removed, you have this removed. You'll lower the, uh, the subframe a bit to get these these pucks in and then do all the bolts and everything the same time as well so just a quick heads up this lower subframe with these body spacers can give you a lot of uh difficulty i found out a way if i can try and explain it so when you unbolt everything pretend this bolt's not here this subframe kind of angles back that way so the bolt is hard to get lined back up with the hole in the frame. I had the bolt, everything lined up. I had it pushed up through the puck. And then I took my torque wrench, put that on here. And then I, I added leverage while the torque wrench was on here. So it's like this. And then I was pressing up with my left forearm here. I kind of pushed the exhaust up a bit in doing so. And then while I was leveraging all of that, I had my foot over here and doing a scissor jacks. And I was jacking this up until it started touching. And then you could feel it slide in. And then while pressure is added from the jack, you'll start trying to, to tighten the bolts. And then you should start to feel it threading. It takes a minute to get this fully bolted. There's a lot of threads, so just keep going. If you notice it's going up, then you're good. Yeah, that's a, that's a hot tip. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, we have the spacer installed on the back. This is loosely installed. Now what the instructions don't say is where to put the other puck, but this um, quarter inch spacer, and that's right here. So the subframe kind of wraps back there and comes up here. So we also have to get this one installed as well. On the front part of this subframe, uh, the bolts are a lot easier to go in because there's more room, more space here, right? To line it up with the hole before it pops up through the top. So this part actually isn't too bad. Okay, springs removed. Make sure you're supporting this control arm with a jack. There's the bolts that you'll remove here. It's all in the instructions. And then you'll remove the sway bar link bolt as well and then you'll slowly lower this down until it reaches to the ground it'll come out of the knuckle and then yeah you remove the spring and then in the control arm you'll put this spacer there's a, a thick metal washer under here and then it'll take a bolt and a nut and then we're going to torque that to 30 foot pounds according to the instructions all right quick little aside here while I have the spring out, I have these sumo springs installed. They offer progressive load when you're carrying weight. So as you carry more weight, these will not allow the springs to compress as much, which is something us RAV4 owners have issues with when we're carrying a lot of gear. 
part number is CSS1125. Install, pretty easy once you have the spring out. I tried putting these on with the spring in and it just didn't go as well. Uh, get those on there. You might have to cut a little bit. As you can see, I cut, I don't know, about an inch off. There shouldn't be any overlap. So yeah, it's kind of what it looks like. Okay, got the control arm back in place. It's a pain in the butt. It's kind of scary to get the spring back in. Get a nice beefy floor jack, get the spring in there, start jacking up, and the control arm will come up around that knuckle, like so. And then you can actually use a screwdriver to get the holes aligned. So here's the, the control arm. The knuckle is in between it. The holes will start to align as this comes up, and then you can kind of use a screwdriver to, to wiggle. Sometimes I even sit back here and I kind of tap it with my foot or nudge it, kick it. Just don't like hit the control arm. Just just tap the rotor area and you should get the holes to align. And then after that, you'll get the sway bar link back installed. You might have to drop the control arm back down a little bit to get that to align. Got to get the, um, the shock back in here and then finish up this, this sleeve area. Okay, I have the shock loosely installed. You'll see here, there's a bolt, it's the black one. There's a washer on this side, washer on this side, and then a lock nut here. Okay, I got everything mostly torqued down. Just going over some, some areas that need torqued. So these bolts that I'm touching, this, of course, the upper shock, the trailing arm with the spacer. So just make sure you get everything torqued. I'm just doing like a last check. This I still need to torque. I couldn't find any exact torque specs online, but I'm just gonna use my best judgment. And I'll probably do 36 on the outside and 66 on the inside. That follows suit with the front toe arm. So um, should be good as long as I keep everything torqued to the same specs on both sides of the vehicle. Okay, one of the last things is getting these easy cam bolts installed on the front strut gonna go on the top one quick thing here you see how thick these bolts are I don't have a 17 gauge here but I can check 18 and it's pretty much butted up against 18 these are 17 millimeter bolts and the easy cams say this is four vehicles with 17 millimeter bolts when I first got these I was like oh my gosh they're so skinny look how much more space there is but it's an easy cam bolt so this thickness right here that's the part that adjusts the camber, and that's the part that's 17 millimeters. So you'll see there's a lot less space on the 18 millimeter hole check. So don't freak out if you realize, or if you see, oh my gosh, there's they're so much thinner than, than my OEM stock bolts. That's okay. I was concerned, like, there'd be wiggle, there'd be play, but this is going to butt up against on the inside of the hole, so don't worry. Okay, so I have the bolt in with the flange sticking towards the inner side of the car. That's because I have positive camber, so I need negative, so I need to correct that. So my tires are sticking out like this, I need to pull it back that way. The way you do that is make sure the flange is sticking that way. This way, you're gonna increase your camber, so it's gonna be more positive. Okay, I got the easy cam bolt installed. Again, that flange piece sticking towards the engine. I got it tightened and then you'll loosen the lower strut mount and that allows this now to, you can turn the head and that'll affect the camper. So turning it either way, it'll start to give you positive or negative camber. Now I don't know how much I need, that's we're going to take it into an alignment shop. I could visually see that I had too much positive camber when the wheels were in, right? So I at least want to get it a little more negative, closer to zero before I take it into the shop. CLC is working on the Godspeed control arms right now. What's needed to adjust to get the camber back in place. You see on the left, it's still unadjusted, but you see how much camber there is. It's really bad. On the right, it's getting closer. Those control arms are going to fix part of that camber issue on the rear. Make the tires drive more flat on the surface. You can already see actually my tires just on the five miles over here that wear pattern, right? 
it wore down that inside. Not a lot. It's just dust, basically. They got around it, but the wear pattern on the tire, you can see clearly. So, without those rear control arms, my tires would be shot a couple months from. 